Welcome to Crystal Coast State Beach. My name is Sarah and I just wanted to show around one of my favorite state parks. I don't know if you can hear me, but I'll do my best to talk loud. This is one of the most gorgeous state park beaches that we have. And we have absolute gorgeous rock formations here. I can't believe for the longest time I would stop at the most south end of this place and I'd never go up to its most northern entrance at uh, Pelican Point. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to show you one of the most phenomenal things that we have here, which shale formation absolutely cracked and bent and formed in a way that you don't see a whole lot of rock like this exposed. As you can see, we have all these layers here and they're these chunks. Each one's just a layer of shale on top of shale. It is just absolutely gorgeous, of course. Bit of a pain on the feet, but it just holds so much historic geological time. And it's, it's great to look at. This water is really high tide right now. Now, check out these black dots we have on this shale. This is tar seeping out of the rock. Shale is what we get our oil from. So when people are talking about drilling in oil formations, they're talking about this shale. Now what happens is this shale will get buried under layers and layers and layers of rock. And through time and pressure, um, eventually a layer typically will form over it as a cap to cover over it. And then the earth will um, put that pressure and cook it. And after a while, the shale breaks down and actually becomes a liquid. So that's how we usually get most of our oil is through the liquefaction of shale rock. Um, go into the conversation of fracking, we're talking about rock like this that has been settled, but it hasn't been cooked enough. So what we do is we put all this, um, we put water, sand, bulls, and we um, drill a hole down. So we drill down and then horizontally, and you shove that with pressure, and it causes the rock to crack. And as the rock cracks, it releases that half developed form of oil. So you suck that back up, you suck up all the other um, chemicals that were used in that process. The downside of this, that what a lot of people don't talk about, is um, you get your crude oil from that shale breakage, and then you have to, one, go get that. You have to cook it a whole lot. There's all these tears in the distillation of oil. Um, there's different levels that get you diesel, your good gas, your different levels, and then some of this actually food grade. Um, some of it goes into your makeup. It's a whole deal. And then the waste of that chemical infused, sand infused water, that gets purified and either um, gets purified enough that it can be used for watering plants or something like that. But more often than not, it's purified to the point where it's acceptable, acceptable to put it back into the earth and let the earth finish the final forms of purification. Because when rain falls, it goes through our earth soil and it purifies that and that's how you get underground formations of water um, for your wells. So that's what we do with uh, hydraulic fraction. It's a very little brief estimate of it. But that's what the oil is for. Shale is formed during the Jurassic period and time periods before that when dinosaurs existed. And the shale is actually composed of plant material. 
It's not the dinosaurs that gave us oil. They existed during the time, but your body cannot create oil. That's not possible. So, plant-formed shale gives us our oil and our tar. Now, the very last thing I want to point out about this place is the ocean. Not really. Almost there. I just want to get back into these rock formations one last time because this is the cool little geology lesson I'll give you. There's anticlines and baseline, or sorry, anticlines and synclines in rock formation. As you notice, this rock was swooping back down when I walked on it. The layers were pointing up towards the sky. And as you look further down, you see it, it bends back down. So it, this is a curve. So right now I am in the syncline formation of this rock. It's great, it's perfect for creating little tide pools. Right now we're here during the high tide, but um, you can come here and there'll be tide pools with little hermit crabs and such. So yeah, so we're in the syncline of this formation. And then you know that because the syncline is like the base, it's the bottom. And then there's the anticline, which is this whole area right up here. This anticline is arching upwards, it's going up. And that's where that point of that anticline is, is where this gap is. With some really great little tide pools. Let's get in here. Oh, you can't see it because of the sun. Ain't that fun. But anyway, so that's the, the point of the anticline here. And I have a really fun little mnemonic device to use for that. And you have your AA for your anticline. And you got that VS for that syncline. And that's the trick that I use to remember what the difference was for tests. It helped me. It, it, was, it was useful for then. So anyways. This is my little introduction to Crystal Coast State Park. It is an absolutely gorgeous park, surfing. You can go um, fishing out here, scuba diving, fishing. I guess that's called deep, surf, deep fish surfing, or my tongue's in turns, okay? Anyways, it's an absolutely gorgeous beach. I've come today to take a nice little stroll in the water not not too cold I'm actually quite surprised how warm it is it's absolutely lovely today is July 2nd it is my Sunday from my full-time job so spending a little afternoon here thanks for joining Angel and Sarah on the trip to the state parks I hope you enjoyed it I hope it was fun for you to look at it. It's a place that I can't stop visiting. Talk to you later. Do you see the crab? I see him. Do you see the crab? Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh, no. God damn, this place is fucking gorgeous. Oh God, where'd he go? We gotta come to Crystal Cove, man. Absolutely fucking gorgeous. So